What's up guys, Dr. Brute 7 signing in, bringing you the Bato Serra custom firmware on my RG35XXH, also available for the RG35XX Plus. This is version 40, the latest. Keep in mind that it's still in the beta stages, so there will be some deficits. And speaking of deficits, oh boy. Anyways, this is a tutorial video, so let's get right into the installation process, then we'll talk more about this. So we'll be installing the latest version of Batocera. Just go to the link in the description. It's a V40 beta for both the Plus and the 35XXH. Just scroll down until you see these lists under the assets. The very first option that says img.gz. So you're gonna be downloading the very first one. Once that's downloaded, you're gonna extract it. I already have it extracted. Along with that, I'll be linking a proper FAT32 formatter because on our on the latest version of Windows, there is no option to format the SD cards to FAT32. So make sure that you get your hands on a proper and a good quality SD card. So I'm going to be formatted with the GUI formatter. So just select the drive, click on start, I successfully formatted it to FAT32. The next step is we're gonna have to flash the image. This here is the image file. We're gonna have to flash it onto our FAT32 format SD cards. We can do it using Using the Win32 Disk Manager. I'm gonna link that on the description as well. It's fairly straightforward. Select the drive, look for the image file, select it and write it. And that's it. Wait for the process to finish up. Alright, so we have successfully flashed the custom firmware image onto our SD cards. Very first thing, we're just gonna remove our SD cards. You can you can just swap between the SD cards and swap between the firmers. That will give you the opportunity to try out new firmers because we also have the Moo OS, which recently just got released, maybe on a later video. You're gonna insert the SD card into your first TF card, the main TF slot. Now, turn on your devices and wait for it to complete the steps. And make sure that your devices are well charged. Now, we have got a really nice looking screen SNK Sega Midway and then there is a status bar at the bottom okay damn that's a uh, let's decrease the volume but Sarah has been successfully installed if we hit the start button it's going to take us to the game settings now there is this scraper let's enable our Wi-Fi okay Wi-Fi has been enabled so second thing that we're gonna do is change our themes press the start button again head over into updates and downloads this is from where you're gonna download set of themes that are available now that the preliminary steps are done we're just gonna transfer some files okay we are done setting up batocera through our anbernic devices creating the necessary partitions and folders through our anbernic devices so as soon as you connect your sd card you're going to see two drives one which is batocera another one that is named as share we're going to be transferring all our rom files and bios files so if we head over into our rom folder you're going to notice all these subfolders created for each specific emulator unfortunately i won't be able to provide you any information regarding rom files where to gather them from that is something that you need to do your own research i don't want my channel to get a strike gather your rom files and you're going to be transferring all these rom files into their specific platforms if you head over into each of these subfolders of the specific platforms you're going to see a text document that says info you're going to see the file extensions that are accepted by each of these systems it's it's a good bit of information to have same goes for bios you're going to be transferring all the bios files for each of these platforms into the bios folder now again i won't be able to give you information related to the bias where to gather the bias files from however you know where to gather them from i really don't need to explain it to you so i'm going to be copying all the bios folders for each of these platforms and transferring them into my sd cards bios folder which can be found in the share destination. Yeah, that's basically it. ROM files goes in the ROM folder and transfer the BIOS files into the BIOS folder. If you want to take care of the background noise, go to sound settings and just disable the front end music. That's it. Scraper basically allows you to add in the box art of the games that you have added. I don't have any box arts available for the MAME emulator along with the Dreamcast. Bring up the main menu, head over to Scraper, select games.db, select Scrape now. Okay, so the scraping has been completed. So there is only one more step that we need to perform. Just press the start button, go to game settings and update game lists. Press on yes. Box arts have been added and updated. 
look at this so this is a very cool added feature okay so let's talk shortcuts because you're gonna need them handy when you're in game before we start all of these shortcut commands should be executed with the R button pressed this here is the R button this every time along with the combination of all the other buttons let's start with save and load states if you want to load a state pressing and holding the R button and the button X that's going to load a state if you want to save a state press and hold the R button press Y that's going to save a state if you want to change save slots R button pressed and held d-pad up or down is going to change the save slot and if you want to bring up the quick menu R button pressed and press the B button that's going to bring up the retro arc quick menu so I'm going to show you guys one of my most personal favorite feature this makes my retro gaming experience so convenient whenever I die I can just take myself a couple of frames back and rectify my mistake that's basically what the rewind feature does rewind support feature needs to be enabled every time you're going to start a game pull up the retro arc quick menu head over to rewind and enable rewind support okay let me just demonstrate this let me just kill myself oops I just killed myself. So let's just pull up a Prince of Persia. There you go. I got the sands of time in me. Endless sands of time, you know what I'm saying? I love this feature. You can also do the opposite. If you want to fast forward, you can do so by pressing and holding the R button and the D-pad right. D-pad right is going to fast forward the process, just like it's going to rewind the process this is a very essential feature for RPG games heavy dialogue games if you want to fasten up conversation you can do so with the help of the fast forward feature these are the most essential set of commands that you need while you're in game however I'm not quite impressed with the emulation performance so there's that maybe once we get a future update and once it becomes more stable we'll be able to enjoy both the emulation and the aesthetics for now if you want Want to experience the other emulation like MAME emulator or the other emulators like the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo Game Boy Advance.
Okay, look, I'm not trying to criticize anyone, but I've seen a lot of YouTube videos speaking highly of this custom firmware. Maybe their experience was different, but after several hours of tweaking, I just can't agree with the others. When it comes to aesthetics, it's top notch. Makes the handheld looks amazing. But the fuck are we gonna do with just that? The PSP emulation is disappointing. It's really disappointing compared to the out of the box stock firmware experience. Now I'll make a separate extended video related to PlayStation Portable emulation. So right now, all I'm gonna say is that Batocera makes PSP emulation worse. I mean look at this. This is not the kind of experience that I was getting when I was running God of War Chains of Olympus on the stock farmer. Despite of making all the changes and tweaking for several hours, I just couldn't find the sweet spot. Yeah, sound stuttering was not an issue on the stock farmer. The other emulators runs quite well. When it came to Dreamcast emulation, which runs quite well, but you do need to select the proper core, otherwise I'm just gonna demonstrate it here. There you go. Now we are just back into the main menu. This is basically what you might experience or you will experience right after you install the custom firmware. You need to do some tweaking. So press the start button, game settings, per system, advanced configuration and select Dreamcast. The very first option you're gonna have to select Flycast. Now it's going to run fine. So yeah, these are the kind of things that I have noticed. However, these are not something that is noteworthy, but definitely the PlayStation Portable emulation is a downer because I did make a video about modifying the updating and modifying the stock firmware that definitely elevates the emulation experience and the handheld experience so I think it would be better to stick to your stock firmware and just modify it unless you are motivated by aesthetics. This is all I had to say about this custom firmware. I mean definitely it does have a lot of customization option when it comes to the user interface. It's totally up to you I just showed you guys the option if you want to there you go you have it or if you want to stick to your basic stock with a little bit of modifications by updating it there is also that check that video out links in the description I'm gonna see you guys on the next one hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative if you did then please make sure to drop in a like and subscribe I'm gonna see you guys on the next one Dr. Brute 7 signing off peace